This video is sponsored by Trugo Republic, the precious metals experts. Talk to one of their experts today about diversifying your portfolio to help assure your future financial security. Find their contact information in the description below and pinned in our first comment. James Kaufman, World News Report today. July 1st, 2024. God bless you and yours. No matter where you are in the world, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had our first M-Class solar flare, or directed, within the last seven or eight days. This flare occurred at 11 UTC time, or right around 5 a.m m central time here in the u.s the flare registered an m 2.14 it doesn't sound very strong but it definitely lifted up a large cme that might or most likely has an earth component to it all right an m 2.17 the only m flare for the last seven plus days it did happen right around 11.02, i.e. the peak UTC time, or about 5 a.m. Central Time. It came from sunspot AR3730, which is a simple sunspot. Currently, we're still running a sea level baseline, which we have been doing for quite some time. We have a, only a 5% chance of having an X-flare, a 35% chance of an M-class solar flare. That's why this one's a little bit, well, unexpected. We're also running a C baseline as discussed. That's why I believe that C-class solar flare percentage should be 100% because we have not been below a C-class baseline in some time. Over to HMI Intense Gram, so we can see where Sunspot AR3730 is. It's located right here. We have 13 sunspots on the Earth-facing side of our solar disk currently, with many more coming around the limb. This is our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. The flare happened mostly over Africa and parts of Western Europe. That was the intense part of the solar flare, although it wasn't very intense. Again, it's the first M flare we've seen in over seven days. Now, all those X flares never generated a CME. I want you all to look at two things. First, here is the CME generated, as you can see right there, by that eruption. Definitely in the right place and the right time. So, ladies and gentlemen, it did generate a coronal mass ejection. It very well could be Earth-facing. I want you all to watch these black dots on either side of the sun. One claims they're planets, but it looks like the sun is almost pulsating. There they are there. You can see them right there. And they go away and they return right there. And this is an ongoing situation. They're hard to see, but they're definitely there. I don't know if the sun is pulsating or what exactly is going on. This definitely looks like something hit the camera, but nothing shows up on goes. So we're going to have to, well, move on. Over to... SDO, so we can take a look at this flare. Uh, it's going to be generated from this area right here. And I will show it to you as we go here. We're just going to play it. Not much to look at. And there it was right there. Take a look at that one more time. And there it was right there. Now, moving over to STO at 171 angstroms, we'll be able to see that flare again right there. I know it doesn't look like much, folks, but it definitely generated the coronal mass ejection 
that has a very good chance of having an earth component right there. Uh, just to keep you on your toes, I also want to show you this large filament eruption that we had earlier. You can see these huge filaments here. And this is inbound for tomorrow, the second, or perhaps the third. And there was the filament eruption and the quote-unquote canyon of fire they talked about. So remember, that's inbound for tomorrow, the second, or perhaps the third, according to NASA. All right, taking a look at STO-HMI magnetogram, it looks like we have a bunch of reverse polarity sunspots to me. Uh, especially down here, it's hard to distinguish. They've named so many different sunspots in here. But we can see that white is over black here, and that would be a reverse polarity sunspot. I'm guessing that's 3729 because they're saying it's complex. And then we see the same thing up here. We see a reverse polarity sunspot. And we'll take a look at the numbers. Uh, black over white in the northern hemisphere, negative over positive, which we shouldn't see. It should be extremely rare. NASA threw out the figure four one thousandths of one percent. Now, almost every sunspot we see is reverse polarity coming around the limb lately and switches polarities. But I believe that's because we're near our solar, well, top of the cycle or cycle peak. Taking another look, it looks like the two reverse polarity sunspots are going to be 3727 and 3735. One in the southern hemisphere, one in the northern hemisphere. Taking a look at Soho, 284 angstroms. Well, we see we have a coronal hole here. This is what I believe to be a reverse polarity sunspot as well as this. And this small sunspot right here is what generated the flare. Amazingly, we can also see we have sunspots coming around the limb, which I will show you next up. Just when you think it's safe to go back in the water, the back side of the sun looks awful, folks. We've got 005 that we probably just saw on Soho coming around. We also have 008 here. We have huge 010. Absolutely enormous here. Uh, we have 011 coming around the limb as well. 012 uh, or 014 is right here. And believe it or not, the other one is under this red large sunspot. You can barely see it sticking out here. You can see how intense this sunspot group is. It looks like it has about seven days before it reaches the limb, although we have several other sunspots that we're going to have to deal with. So it's just going to get worse, not better. So with that said, CME was generated, no matter what they tell you. And it very well could have an earth component to it. God bless you and yours. Please share, subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.